years of scouting that we have uh, succeeded in achieving that there has ever been a more dynamic chief than the one we have today. I mean that sincerely. Of course we had our baby pal, but since that time I don't believe we've had one who's cared so much for the young people in his charge. This is his fourth visit to Hampshire in the space of 12 months and that is far more than we've ever seen all our chief scouts before him. So we are indeed fortunate to have such a dynamic person heading the Scout Association today in the United Kingdom. For those of you who don't know, he's, he's, he was a distinguished soldier. He holds the rank of Major General. He was what you would call a Red Berry, and of course was stationed in Aldershot. He holds one or two medals for that which he keeps very quiet about, but you can read it on the end of his name. He, he parachutes, he's a pilot, he's a deep sea skipper. There isn't much that this man hasn't done during the course of his young life. Do you like that, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't taken my theory on <laughs> at Sandhurst, where all the army officers are trained. So you can imagine that he's had a fairly wide experience. It's therefore with great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, that I introduce you to our Chief Scout, Major General Michael Walsh. Lady Mayors, uh, County Commissioner, uh, the leaders, and very important, the boys. Um, I think you would have laughed only about ten minutes ago if you had seen two cars going round and round, checking on every roundabout from the Frimley no, Turn. No, I was sitting there. <laughs> Which was the slip road. Anyhow, sorry to have kept, kept you uh, waiting. But um, this really is a great occasion for this, this group because here behind us uh, is the culmination of a lot of work, a lot of effort by many people. First of all, and you, you, we all know the sort of agonizing decisions that have to go on. You know, how can we afford it? How can we raise the money? Are we overstepping the mark? Is it really possible to raise this, these funds? How can we raise the grants and signs? But here behind, obviously, is the result of it all, a combination of a marvellous amount of work and of planning, of efforts by leaders, by the lay people, by many of the parents I know, uh, with the sort of do-it-yourselves books and trials and so on, who really helped to create this marvellous new headquarters. 
And boys, it's your future home and those that follow it, follow it. Because it's a marvelous achievement. And I want you at the end of tonight to, when you finally finish and go home, just turn around to those that you know have been involved and say those two words, thank you. Because those two words really do mean a great deal. Good to be, to be in Hampshire again. I'm almost learning now the words of Mighty Hampshire, which we sing from time to time. To time but Not I tonight. <laughs> uh, and so on. Now, I always, uh, in a moment when we've opened the headquarters, walk around and meet everyone, particularly the leaders, who give them so much of their time to really look after other people's children. And I'm always grateful to that. I think it's absolutely marvelous. I always like to finish with a, with a little story that happens to me in my travels as Chief Scout. This afternoon, I was on Bisley Rangers with the Surrey Venture Scouts and shooting. But some time ago, and I know John and one or two of the leaders have heard me tell the story, but it's a nice sequel to it. And the story goes like this, that I was visiting a county uh, in Essex, and I went up on a Sunday morning and got up to Saffron Walden, which is a rather nice village. And my wife and I were ahead of time, so we popped in to have a cup of coffee in a hotel. And we hadn't been there very long. We must have been spotted by the manageress, who very shortly came out, and behind her was one small boy in a single looking shorts. And in her right hand, she had a cap, cap jersey, and in her left hand, she had a year of the scout bench. And she said, oh, please help me. Where is this meant to go? So, <laughs> so I told her. <laughs> so she said, oh, thank you very much, because my boy, my son, has been getting at me to get this on for, this, for today. What's going on up on the airfield? So I said, well, I think it's just the Scouts and Cubs getting together. She said, oh, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. They've got some VIP fella coming. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is, that is my story up to last week. Last week, I went to talk to the leaders of East Cambridgeshire in Cambridge in the university uh, uh, city. And afterwards, I went to meet all the leaders. And one lady, cub lead, leader, Arcana, came up to me and said, Chief, I know the manageress of that hotel, and I can tell you the sequel. And the sequel goes like this. That evening, when her young son, the cub, came back, he rushed up and said, Mummy, you know that gentleman who was in the hotel this morning? That was the chief scout. Oh, God, she said. No, Mummy, the Chief Scout. <laughs> um, this comes to the, the, the great moment when we cut the tape and declare the Smartless headquarters open. And I think it'd be rather nice if one of the cups would like to come and help me. You're a sixer. Would you like to come and help, help me? And here's the big moment. You and I are going to open this headquarters together. Right? So I'll take the bottom half, you take the top half, and together we go, and there we are.
If we have the mayor in there, you come forward. Sorry, it's a bit tight on space. That's yeah. the that's it. Could you come that side? And I'll get over here and get one or two. A little awkward. How about that? You're coming nice and close. They're all very shy, though. I don't know well, why they're so shy. Well, we don't want to steal the thunder. Where's the district commissioner? Excuse me. We don't want to steal the thunder. What do you mean? When you're ready, yes. Ready? One, two, three. Go. I did. Oh, 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 oh,
said, thank you, and how are we ever going to repay all the people that have really dedicated themselves to First Coast Shelf We will never be able to say thank you to them enough. But there's one thing that Scouts can do, and that's to give a thanks badge. To give a thanks badge from the Chief Scout is the highest thing we can do. I would like him, first of all, to give a thanks badge to Richard Gower. Being presented to all of the Gower family for everything that they have done prior to Derek and since Derek. Could Richard please come forward wherever he is? Of a group of skaters, wife, 
And we do, on this particular occasion, say at this moment in time, to you personally, a very sincere and grateful thank you. God bless you. last year 
I gave a, a, um, a guilt cross to a young scout. He'd only just come up from being a cub. And I tell you what he did. And I think probably the co cubs and scouts will know exactly what they should they would have done in the same circumstances. He was left in charge of his young brother one summer evening when his parents went down the road to see some friends. His young brother was in bed and uh, he got into bed and fell asleep and suddenly he woke up and found he could smell some burning smoke. He rushed to the bedroom door, opened the door, and there was smoke coming up the stairs. And he thought, my God, I must get my brother up and out of the house. So he woke his young brother up. They got to the door, the bedroom door, but by this stage, the smoke had got really bad. It was billowing up. And they couldn't get through it. Now, that young scout remembered what he had been taught by his aunt Kayla when he was a cub, of how to get out through a smoke-filled room. I wonder if any of you know what, <coughs> how it should be done. Yes? Well done. If you get down on the floor, you're able to crawl below the smoke, where there's more oxygen. That's one way of getting out. Well done. Now, there's another thing that you can do to get through a smoke-filled room. Anybody? Tell me. Put a wet cloth over your mouth. Right. Well done. Your arcade has done her. It's done her. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, that's it. By putting a wet towel, wet handkerchief, something over your head, then you can breathe the oxygen, and you're able to get out through the smoke. And quickly, that young scout took a towel over his head and over his brother's head. They got down on the floor and they got out and down the staircase and to safety. But there was something else that they, that they could do. Something else. The house is on fire. What would you do? Ring the fire brigade. Right. Ring for the fire brigade. And how would you ring for the fire brigade? Nine, nine, nine. Right. And what would you tell them? Come on, Scott. <laughs> 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 cups, are, cups, are, <laughs> cups are too good. Come on, Scott. Tell them the fire screw is. Details of it. Where your parents are. Any landlord near there. I don't know where it is. Well done. Tell the fire brigade exactly uh, where the address, uh, any other details that you can get. Now that young scout did it. <coughs> Father Gay got there in time. And they saved the house. It was an electrical fault and, and there was an awful lot of smoke, but it wasn't too serious. But he saved his brother's life, he saved his own life, and he saved, saved the house. And I think that that deserved an award. Now that all came about and was able to achieve because he had listened and been taught by his archiver. And I'm telling you that story because. There are many things that I was taught as a cub and a scout many, many years ago up in Yorkshire that have been very useful to me all my life, all my career as a soldier and now as your chief scout. So do remember that, that besides having a lot of fun, besides having lots of games and activities and camping and so on, many of the things that you are taught by your leaders Scout leaders or our carers and so on are uh, a great news to you uh, in your life. Thank you.
use of a piece of land that really was not of much use for anything else. I do hope the trains don't uh, bother the, the scouts and cuts too much. But um, I must congratulate all who worked so hard to, to the culmination this evening. And um, I would like to add my thanks also to all those who have been thanked tonight, to the parents of Cups and Scouts, um, for their cooperation and their encouragement. And um, all they do, as a parent myself, I know that so much depends on the parents' cooperation and help. And, and, and I do know how much they do put into it. So I must congratulate all of you. So I'm going to take back with me to the council, the council meeting on Thursday night, an account of this evening and all the work that's gone into it and tell them uh, how much has been done and what good haul this is and how much I've enjoyed being here tonight on behalf of all the councillors. And may I congratulate you all on what you've done. Thank you.